It's match day. Aberdeen travel to the capital to take on Hearts at Tyne Castle in what is a huge game for the Dons after the disappointment of the League Cup semi-final at the weekend. Jim Goodwin's side are looking to get back to winning ways. There's a number of games in the Scottish Premiership tonight. Celtic playing host to St Mirren, Livingston at home to Dundee United and Kilmarnock play host to Rangers. And there are permutations at the top of the table. So, depending what happens at Celtic Park, could mean potentially St Mirren going above us. And, obviously, we'll be looking for us to close the gap on Livingston, if not go above them. But more importantly, keep in touch with Hearts in third place. That is how the top six looks tonight. Hi, everybody. A very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV this Wednesday night. How are you? How are you feeling about the game? Please do get in touch tonight. If you're on your way to the game, let me know how you're feeling as we gather momentum towards kickoff. We're only one hour away. Coming up tonight, we'll be hearing from Robbie Hanratty, who's a sports journalist and a big Aberdeen fan from the Daily Record. And it was Hitchum Zero Ali's birthday yesterday. He was born on this day. Uh, he was born yesterday, back in 1977. Phil Maguire is going to remember his good pal. So that's all to come tonight and we're going to start with the team news. It's fresh in and i got to be honest, the team is a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. So Jim has only needed to make basically two changes but the big change is in goal. So Joe Lewis replaces Kelly Roos who injured himself in the League Cup semi-final on Sunday. The other change sees Johnny Hayes coming in for our suspended captain Anthony Hayes. Duke starts Leighton Clarkson starts. Players who I've got to be honest, I didn't think they were going to make it. Ross McCrory captains the side tonight. So let's have a look and see what we think will be the formation this evening. So I've kind of had a bit of a guess at this, but this is roughly what I think will happen. So Ross will partner Liam Scales in the middle of defence. Hayden will play his normal left-back role. Um, sorry, that Jaden Richardson should not be there. Uh, I do apologise for that. Uh, Ramadani will play just in front. Shinny and Matt Kennedy, I think, will play in midfield. And then I've got a feeling Johnny will play on the left, with Duke maybe just on the right-hand side, and then Bojan will play up front by himself. So that's what I think. Apologies for the right-back role there. That should not be in there. That was a wee slip. I do apologise for that. So... Okay, so that's what I think. Tell me what you guys think about the team and the formation that we're possibly going to play tonight. Jim Goodwin is particularly looking forward to tonight's game. He thinks it's going to be a cracking game at Tyne Castle. My thanks to North Sound Radio for providing me the audio of Jim's press conference, which I can now bring to you. Yeah, I think it's got the. I think it could be a really, really good game. I think it's going to be a very entertaining game. I think it's two very good teams going at it. And, um, you know, hearts are sitting in third place in the table at the moment. They've been on a very good run of form of late. And um, obviously we want to to get back into that position ourselves. So, you know, to win gives us the opportunity to do that and to close the gap on the top teams. So, um, you know, two very good teams, I think. And um, hopefully it will make for a, a very good entertaining game of football. So there we are. That's the thoughts of the manager, Jim Goodwin, ahead of tonight's game. So let's have a quick look and see how many of you are on tonight. And let's see what you're saying about the game. Sorry, let me just turn that down. There we go. Uh, good evening to all of you. Hope you're all well. Uh, Jason Campbell has said, we'll be amazed if we get anything tonight. Well, I've got to be honest, Jason, after I've seen the team now, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident. Uh, Mark Munn says, hi, Ali, bring on hearts. Absolutely. Oh, Livingston has just been postponed. Thank you, Rob, for getting in touch. Rob, uh, Livingston's game is now off <laughs> on an all-weather pitch. <laughs> Can't make it up, can you? Um, Paul C. Ricky is going to say he's going to watch it behind a pillow. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, Jamesy Thompson has said, having seen the team, I fancy it's 2-1 tonight. Lee Doubles. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? Uh, strong team. Hopefully three points. Building the fantastic display at Hamden. Nice to see Duke in his usual place. Come on, you Reds. Rod Cow has said, Big Joe. I think that's his first Premiership start, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Mark Marna said, if we play like we did in the first half of the Rangers match, we'll be fine. I've got to agree. Uh, Lorraine Baxter has also said, hope we can push on from Sunday's performance. Hi, Lorraine. Hope you're well. Um, 
So let me uh, let me get to more of your comments as they come in. Thank you for tuning in so far. So I caught up earlier with Daily Record journalist Robbie Hanratty, who's a big Aberdeen fan, and uh, we had a little chat about tonight's game. Here's Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Thank you so much for jumping on tonight because I know that you're working this evening. So I've got to ask you to begin with, this game is quite vital, isn't it? Because I think if we go nine points behind... With them playing well, that's a big ask, isn't it? Yeah, I think tonight, even though we're still early enough in the season, it is a must-not-lose game for us that we do have these, this ambition of finishing third and getting ourselves back into European football because Hearts inevitably are our closest challengers. We'd like to think it's that, but we've shown we can do that. Look at the game at Pataudry. We beat them, we played well, we took... Well worked goals, but Tynecastle is a place that in the last five six years we haven't won and hasn't been too favourable results. So I think we need to go there positive and take a lot of there's a lot of good things to look back on from Sunday and think yeah if we can emulate that then hopefully we can win because we're talking about going nine points behind them with a loss. But if we win, we're right back in that mix and for all the doom and gloom since the World Cup break, it could be back to some positivity again. And I think even though we lost, looking back on Sunday, I think that positivity is there and waiting to just be unleashed if we can just click and maybe get a good result. And we all know what the performances and the results away from home haven't been too favourable. But I think with Game Shinny, we've seen that in the last two games, that mm. they can make maybe and... Maybe Hearts have had longer to prepare, but maybe we want to mean business, show the fans, yeah, we can still be in this race for third place and hopefully get three points come 10 o'clock. I must admit, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's, Sunday was gut-wrenching. It was a kick in the teeth. But there were so many positives to take from the game. And I, I'm totally with you. I'm actually feeling quite positive about tonight's game. And if we can take that sort of effort and commitment from Sunday into tonight's game... I'm quietly confident, I've got to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Like, you could look. It's easy for us to look and be like, oh, Lawrence Shanklin's in great goal scoring form. They've got this and that. They've got a solid enough defence. But we've got threats of our own. And I know going into the game, Jim Goodwin remained quite coy in terms of his press conference yesterday with his Keller Roos fit, his Duke fit, his Slayton Clarkson fit. But I think even with the squad we do have, obviously... The skip shirts, not got to be there, but even where we bit the rejig at the back, we've got a strong enough team, as we've shown earlier in the season, to go toe to toe with hearts. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know why, because usually after defeat, especially to Rangers, we'd be doom and gloom, but there's something about in the back of my mind that's like, yeah, maybe this is the start of something we can get a bit of a run going. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, so the chairman came out today and he's tweeted, um, saying that January is notoriously difficult to get quality in. Um, yeah, there's no argument with that, but there is an argument to suggest that if there had been a little bit more forward planning, we might not have found ourselves in this situation. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, I'm not sure. No, I, th I think you're quite right, Ali, when you say that, because the fact that you could go into a season, like... They're much forgotten about Danny Povara. I've got to look back to that first game of the season, how he ended up having to start that game. Going into preparation for the whole league campaign with signing two centre-backs, one which can't play against Celtic and one who's already seen two red cards in the last few weeks. It leaves us out and then I do understand Goodwin's comments of Jack Milne was itching to play and you want to develop these players you don't want them on sitting on the bench, but that's fine and well. But you need to have it, and we don't. And I was shocked. I know the comments yesterday were that we fell through trying to sign a defender earlier in the window. So, and I'm sure I would never doubt that the club are not actively trying to sign these sure. players. But sure. you shouldn't really be having to rush in the January window and be in this situation. A club of the size of Aberdeen should have had that debt. And I don't want to dwell on old players that's left and everything because maybe that was right. But if you are getting rid of players in the summer, it was always in my mind, I think I've said this to you before, 
the squad was so top heavy. Last season it was top heavy in a different way, but this way it's been like because Ross McCrory, oh, he's excelled it right back in recent games, but he's not a centre back, so he's probably going to have to move back into centre back and it just messes with the mojo of the team. And you can't tell me that a club like Aberdeen can't attract or find another centre back that would be of an all out calibre to be coming in. So I do understand. And I like him being transparent in a sense that he's coming on Twitter and saying that. And mm. it's no doubt that it's M- Mislovic and we've already seen with Shinny are good signings. But a centre back and a right back cover should have been signed in the summer, not scrambling about now. Which, in hindsight, if we had had that before Sunday's game, thing, the way it panned out might have not happened. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the only thing that concerns me, Robbie, is it might come back to bite us on the bum, but time will tell. Mate, listen, thank you so much for jumping on as always. Lovely to see you. Um, let's hope for a big win tonight and we'll catch up again soon. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Thanks, mate. See you, Robbie. Bye. Thank you, Robbie. As always, here's your match stats for tonight's game. So Aberdeen have only lost one of their last seven league matches against Hearts, winning four and drawing two. But Hearts are unbeaten in the last seven home league games against us, winning four, drawing three, since we beat them 2-1 back in May 2017. Now, this one's slightly disconcerting. The Dons have lost 11 points from winning positions on the road this season, which is more than any other Scottish Premiership club. Now, the Dons could lose five straight away league games games for the first time since December 2010 but let's hope it doesn't come to that the man in the middle tonight is Willie Collum on VAR is Alan Newlands let's get to more of your comments thank you so much for watching tonight Uh, let me get back to where I was before bear with me bear with me Um, okay so Rob Clark has come back on to say that he thinks the captain's issue has been resolved now with tonight's decision. Interesting to see that Jim actually came out and said there will be no change of captain. Um, Marty Meldrum has said, good evening all. Got a really good feeling about tonight. I hope you're right. James McGaskill has come on and said, a good lineup. Hope Joe Lewis does well. Great to see him back. Brian Reid has said, good team. I just hope that the boys are not too tired from Sunday's game and hope we see Babbage getting some time in the first team. Um, Deep Space Hebrides has said, good evening, Ali, from all at Lewis and Harris Dons. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Um, John Robertson has said, strong starting 11, heed first. Um, Laurel 101 has said, more of the same, please, dandies tonight. And Marty has come back on to say, uh, tonight is the night our away form turns around. It's got to start somewhere, hasn't it? Um, Mark Mon is delighted to see Joe back in as a, he said he's a fabulous backup keeper. Go on, my son. Kaiser has come on. Hi, Kaiser. Good to hear from you. Hearts are not all that. We should be able to get down there and beat that lot. I agree. Julie McKenzie says, good to see Joe getting a start and McCrory taking on the captaincy. Why is Vinny not starting though? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I've got to admit, I thought Vinny was going to start tonight and I had him actually in my original lineup to start because I thought Leighton Clarkson was going to miss out or juke. So yeah, interesting one that. Um, Kevin Gibb has said, good evening. Hi, Kevin. Looking forward to the game. Decent lineup. Going to go for a 1-0 win. So many of you are disappointed that Willie Collum is the referee. <laughs> uh, Dan and Lackey Murison, I hope I've pronounced that right. If we're not up for it from the start tonight, it will be a nightmare. I was at Hamden on Sunday and it was great to see the fans appreciating the team and staying right to the end and appreciating the efforts. Unlucky. You won't be surprised to learn that we sold out our ticket allocation for tonight. I'm telling you, it's the best travelling support in the land and I won't have anyone tell us otherwise. On this day in the club's history, back in 1958, Aberdeen FC Hall of Fame member and Gothenburg legend Peter Weir was born. Today, Peter celebrates his 65th birthday. I swear to God, that man had magic dust in both his football boots. One of my all-time heroes, closely behind Willie Miller. 
Back on this day in 2004, Aberdeen midfielder Ryan Duncan was born. Today, Ryan celebrates his 19th birthday. Many happy returns, young man. Back in 1989, Dutch cult hero Willem van der Ark signed for the Dons in a £300,000 deal from Willem Twee in the Dutch Eredivisie. And on this day back in 1999, Aberdeen legend Teddy Scott was honoured with a testimonial game against Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. After the game ended 1-1, the Dons won 7-6 on penalties. Now, if you follow me on my socials, you would have seen yesterday that I posted about the anniversary of Hitcham Zero Alley's birthday. So he was born yesterday back in 1977. And um, it gets the most amazing traction on my socials, particularly on the, the official Facebook page. Um, and it's incredible to see the people that respond to the post, including many, many, many people from Morocco who have also now started following uh, me on social, which is extremely humbling. So it just goes to show how much love there was for the guy. Let's just remind ourselves how special he really was. So many of you actually um, messaged me to say how surprised they were that he only actually made 48 appearances and scored 13 goals. But all of those 13 goals were absolutely memorable. And he was only for us, with us for what was nearly two years. His roommate used to be Phil Maguire. And earlier, I caught up with him so Phil could remember his good pal. Hi, mate. Thank you for jumping on. Okay. The first question I'd like to ask you about Zero is what were your first impressions of him? Um, first impressions were he came into the treatment room, he'd just been signed and we had an evening game, it was a midweek game um, and I remember coming in with his um, one of his advisors who subsequently became good friends, looked a bit like Lionel Richie, uh, Isham had that sort of term here. Um, I mean, he, was, he was really, you know, he was only about five foot seven, I think, five foot eight, if that. Um, just walked in, um, and there was immediately an aura about him. You know, there was a, a kid here. He's arrived. He got a bit of talent, um, and he just lit up the room straight away. You know, because of his his infectious smile and his character. Um, he spoke no English, or he chose not to speak English at that point. Um, and it was all the um all the French words and the shaking of the hands and with his interpreter. Um, but yeah, that was my very first first impressions um, where, um, well, who's this kid here? <laughs> ben Thornley said that while he was at Aberdeen, Zero was the most technically gifted player that he played with during his, uh, his one year at Pataudry. Can we just elaborate on that? How good exactly was he? He was, do you know what? He's... We all know this, and Aberdeen fans will know this. He was a luxury player, hmm. an absolutely luxury player. You, you put him in the mould of like an Ian Jess. He could just do things with a football that, that no others could. Um, we, we we nicknamed him the Curly Slipper, you know, because um, he's Moroccan roots. And he just, I think it was his goal against St Mirren, the long free yeah. kick, yeah. the other free yeah. kicks. He just, in training, you would have him in such a tight area and out of nowhere, you know, one step and he's, he's bent it around the goalkeeper. Um, on top of maybe his 25 uh, step overs, his double cry step overs and things like that. He just, when he got the ball, you knew something was going to happen more often than not. Um, and don't get me wrong, there was times he was, he was, he was horrendous in training, nothing would come off, but that probably <laughs> coincided when the pitches were up to their uh, ankles in mud and it was heavy rain and it was minus conditions and he was. He had that many layers on himself. He just looked like the Michelin man. So, um, yeah, that was uh, Isham. He, he could do wonderful things with a ball. What was he like to actually train against? And did you sort of go up against him in, you know, in these small-sided 1v1 games and the little triangles yeah, that I mean, you guys do? Well, obviously, in training, you know, it's you're always up in these duels and bigger games. And it's, it's a competitive environment. You want to get the best over it, you know. You know, me and Isham were very, very close. Um, but any time I come up against him, I knew what I needed to do. I couldn't give him that space. Because if I knew if I gave him space, he would be gone. So I just made sure I was right up on when I let him move. I was pulling him, tripping him, pushing him. And I just knew how to get inside his head. Um, on top of that, I would also turn around and say, I'm not cooking your tea later on the night if he scores. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's your fondest memory of him? 
my fondest memory, there's so many, you know, for, for the, the period of time he was there and the period of time, obviously, when he left, um, and we were still close and, and, and speaking with one another when he moved across, back across to, to Morocco. There were so many, but I think for me, he was just a lovely, lovely human being, you know. Um, he would stop to speak to everybody. He would shake hands. He had that big, big smile. Um, yeah, he had that big smile. And I'm, I'm thinking now uh, there was one time we were at, uh, I think we had um, TGIs or something like that. And um, <laughs> he'd got corn on the cob. Oh, my goodness. And that big smile just became a big yellow corn on the cob with his big, big teeth, honestly. Um, and I remember he's getting trying to get the toothpick. But he, he just didn't care that way. Do you know what I mean? He just had a, an aura around him where... People wanted to speak to him. People wanted to be with him, um, and he just made people feel good about themselves, um, which is very difficult to do um, at the best of times. And that's probably one of my fondest memories. That sort of time that he had for others. Fantastic, Phil. Thank you so much for jumping on. Lovely to see you. Well, see you soon. Thank you. What a player Zero was. So many of you are now commenting about him as well, which is fantastic. Fraser Gunn has said, loved Zero. Uh, Kaiser has reminded us that Zero was injured for a whole season. Thanks, Kaiser. He also said that um, he remembers the time he saw Zero walking up School Road in Seaton. Um, Brian Reed said, Zero was excellent to watch. Such a talent. Uh, get JG to sign another Moroccan player. Malcolm Park has come on. Hi, Malcolm. Hope you had a good day. He says, good evening, folks. Zero was one of the most technically gifted players I've ever seen in my 40 years following the Dons. What a player. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the interview that I did with Ben Thornley. It's on the vault um, in that series of interviews that I did. And he said that Zero was the most technically gifted player that he played with at Aberdeen. Um... Mark Manna said, Zero was incredible. Reminded me of Hans Heelhouse. Um, so many of you, again, talking about the commitment that we showed on uh, Sunday's game against Rangers. That, and if we can show that sort of commitment tonight, that we really do have half a chance against Hearts tonight. Um, uh, a couple of you are saying here, Mark Manna said, Bojan showed he's a big game player. He's quality, but needs the rest to raise their game. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um a couple of you here have talked about Snodgrass. So Gregor Reed came on and said, should we not man-mark Snodgrass as everything goes through him? And Mark Munn replied by saying, no, we cut off the ball to Snodgrass. Interesting to see what will happen there this evening. If you're just joining us, hi, how are you doing? Just let me very quickly remind you of the starting 11 that Jim Goodwin has picked tonight. So two changes. Um, so Joe Lewis has come in for Kelly Roos, who is injured. And Johnny Hayes comes in for the suspended Anthony Stewart um, so it looks like it will be a flat back for Ross McCrory is the skipper tonight so that is how the team line up tonight Joe Lewis Ross McCrory Liam Scales Graham Shinney Johnny Hayes Bojan Majofsky Duke Hilber Leighton Hayden and Matt Kennedy a very strong starting 11 as I said at the top of the show a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be right guys we are done thank you so much for watching thank you for getting online tonight and interacting with us as always much appreciated we will be back tomorrow night with a review show so all that's left to say is the very best of luck to the lads tonight don't leave anything on that pitch again I say it every week show them how good you are and let's get closer and closer to them and let's show everybody why we should be pushing right up there. And then kicking on and start closing the gap on Rangers in second. And take it from there. I don't want to finish third in the league. I don't want that talk anymore. I want us right up there. As high as we can possibly be. Enjoy the game tonight, guys. We will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>